Hermaeus' hypersonic quarter horse jet might just be the jet of the future, possibly retiring even Lockheed Martin's jet of the future, the hypersonic SR-72, before it sees the light of day. The quarter horse has broken new grounds and the United States Air Force is more than impressed. So much so that they've awarded the startup company a $60 million contract to flight test the quarter horse. The quarter horse is estimated to travel Mach 5 speeds, five times the speed of sound, on a single go and is based on the turbine-based combine cycle, TBCC, engine, which combines a supersonic turbojet engine with a scramjet, which is simply a supersonic combustion ramjet engine. This engine configuration means the quarter horse would perform effortlessly well at whatever speeds, be it the relatively low commercial airline speeds of today or at hypersonic speeds that would leave even fighter jets in the dust. Keep in mind that Hermaeus and the United States Air Force aren't just getting drunk on hypersonic speeds to have another unrealized hypersonic concept in their fleet. The quarter horse may actually introduce the world to new commercial and military defense flights, and may even have Lockheed Martin on board to aid the development of the SR-72. After all, Lockheed Martin has played their part in hypersonic flight development, particularly with the SR-71 Blackbird, which was retired in 1998 from the US Air Force and 1999 from NASA after a successful 30-year stay in service. SR-71 the Blackbird was able to travel at a max speed of Mach 3, qualifying it as a hypersonic jet, at least before Mach 5 became the benchmark for hypersonic speeds. Lockheed Martin, via its Skunk Works division, introduced the world to the SR-71 in January of 1966, even though its first flight officially took place in 1964. The SR-71 was operated by both the United States Air Force and NASA, thanks to its capabilities that allowed for space applications. The SR-71 was developed as a highly classified project, also known as a black project, and was only publicly announced when the right time came, according to the government. The SR-71 was a strategic reconnaissance aircraft designed by American aerospace engineer Clarence Kelly Johnson and it was tasked with gathering intelligence in the form of images, signals, measurements, and signatures. This was made possible with signals intelligence sensors, a side-looking airborne radar, and a high-def photo camera. The shape of the SR-71 is largely based on the A-12, one of the first jets with a reduced radar cross-section, making it much more invisible to radar. And whenever the invisibility efforts proved insufficient, and the SR-71 gets spotted and then shot at with missiles, the jet could easily just outfly these missiles. Only 32 SR-71s were ever created, 12 of them were lost to accidents and none ever went down to enemy fire, which is understandable. At thrice the speed of sound, accidents aren't exactly too far off, and that may be why both the SR-72 and the quarter horse would likely be unmanned hypersonic jets. As at its time of retirement, the SR-71 had already played a massive role in the development of hypersonic flight because its pros would be integrated into future hypersonic fighters such as the SR-72 and Quarter Horse. And measures have been taken to address the cons. In fact, the SR-72 would have so many similarities in DNA as the SR-71 that it is nicknamed the Son of the Blackbird. SR-72 the SR-72 is Lockheed Martin's answer to a world that demands hypersonic travel for defense purposes. Once fully developed, it would serve the same purpose as its predecessor, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Unlike its predecessor, however, the SR-72 would likely perform strike operations. Its attacking capabilities could make the jet a deadly, self-sustaining, highly evasive fighter. The SR-72, son of Blackbird, would have a single TBCC engine like the SR-71 and is expected to have its first flight in 2023. A full ready-to-go version for the Air Force is estimated to be developed by 2030 and with NASA's contract awarding nature to Lockheed Martin in the past regarding hypersonic tech, 
it's likely that this too will be operated by both the United States Air Force and NASA. The US had previously made several attempts to replace the SR-71, with none really living up to expectations. For instance, the hypersonic technology vehicle 2, HTV-2, was an aircraft designed to reach high hypersonic speeds of Mach 20. But its two test flights were not so subtle failures as they both reached abrupt crash endings about 9 minutes into their planned 30-minute flights. In terms of the cost of the SR-72, there hasn't been too much buzz about it. However, Lockheed Martin's current strategic advisor and former CEO, Marilyn Houston, shared in 2016 that the aircraft could be built for less than $1 billion. Today, the SR-72 remains the closest machine from Lockheed Martin to current hypersonic speeds and is expected to go as fast as Mach 6, potentially outracing Hermaeus's quarter horse. And although the quarter horse only has a top speed of Mach 5.5, it does get its credit as being the only hypersonic jet that could serve commercial purposes in the future. This remains Hermaeus's main force since its launch in 2018, and they've made some significant progress in a relatively short timeline of three years. NASA and the Air Force have invested in the startup company because hypersonic speeds is a department that even they haven't been able to completely crack. So if the quarter horse turns out to be a success like it's looking to be, the tech used in its development could easily have military applications, and maybe ultimately shift the military's focus from stealth to blurry speeds. Thus, the reason why the US Air Force splashed $60 million in the test flight of the quarter horse. NASA's exact investments aren't as widely known, and this isn't the first time the Air Force in particular would be investing in the startup. Roughly a year before the latest $60 million investment, they also brewed up a $1.5 million contract for Hermaeus to continue its work on hypersonic travel after the company successfully tested its Mach 5 engine prototype in February 2020. To date, the quarter horse remains the hypersonic jet with the highest payload capacity, and this is why it is referred to as the plane of the future, because it is the one that civilians would most likely see frequently and actually sit in. And thanks to a TBCC engine based on the General Electric J85 engine, we might soon be going from New York to London in one and a half hours rather than the traditional seven hours. This engine, which was used in the Northrop F-5 fighter jet, has already proved itself as an efficient engine in the supersonic space and would only be repurposed using Hermaeus's proprietary tech into a TBCC engine for hypersonic use. Hermaeus currently has about seven of these quarter of a ton engines. It remains one of General Electric's most successful engines, producing a thrust of about 3,000 pound force dry and 5,000 pound force with afterburner. The engine is estimated to remain in the US Air Force service through the 2040s, and understandably so. In terms of costs, Hermaeus seems to have that bit under check too. They've centered the quarter horse around hardware-rich autonomous and reusable systems that focus squarely on requirements. This way, there are virtually no unnecessary components to drive up costs in the program, and thus, Hermaeus is confident that they could execute the quarter horse test flight for less than $100 million, which is relatively low for a hypersonic project at this stage. So, so far, Hermaeus is designing a hypersonic aircraft that's both economical and efficient, and they've also successfully demystified the hypersonic space and shown that it isn't necessarily exclusive to trained fighter pilots. This level of success in roughly three years could only be proof that Hermaeus's stock price might soon take to the skies, just like their jet. But hey, this is not financial advice. The hypersonic space is fast developing, and the US military is convinced that a Mach 5 Plus jet will take to the skies sooner than later. And yes, the Blackbird did have a blissful 30-year career, but it wouldn't classify as a hypersonic today. However, the Blackbird's role in the development of modern hypersonic jets cannot be overstated, particularly in the effectiveness of hyperspeed on the battlefield. Then the son of Blackbird has come to play its part, featuring more state-of-the-art everything than its predecessor ever had access to particularly its TBCC engine and a more attack-minded setup with ammunition mounted on. The SR-72 is also designed as an unmanned aircraft, 
thanks to the development of drones and communication tech over the past 20 years. And like the SR-72, the Quarter Horse has plans that could define it as an unmanned aircraft. However, there are talks that this could be optional once the flight test is complete. This makes sense, especially in the commercial versions. You might agree that a plane feels more secure with a pilot on seat. One thing is for sure though, supersonic speeds might soon be regarded as too slow, and the speed of sound even slower. This might sound almost sci-fi, and maybe it is, but it's the world we live in today and it's amazing to see. Another thing that would be amazing to see is you clicking on that red subscribe button and subscribing to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It helps greatly with the YouTube algorithm. Feel free to ask any question in the comments section below, and we'll discuss them soon. That'll be all for this video. We'll see you in the next one.